Well, the real estate market has had an up and down time this year. The high interest rates look to take its toll. The lack of inventory has also done that. And all the while, home prices staying fairly elevated. And then there are the concerns about the future of the commercial real estate market as well. To discuss that and much more, pleasure to be joined here in studio by Susan Wachter, professor of real estate here at the Wharton School. Great to see you again, Susan. Thanks for your time My today. pleasure. How do you kind of put a framework on, on what we've seen in 2023? 2023 has been a very difficult year, and the housing market came to a screeching halt starting in late 2022 because of Fed action. There's no way that a 7% interest rate won't cause the market to freeze, which it did. But it wasn't simply on the interest rate side, as you reflected, it's also the inventory. So the two is enough to kill the market. So this is a market where we haven't seen the lows in activity for decades. And at the same time, housing prices are so elevated and the cost to become a homeowner makes it for most households simply impossible at a time when uh, the, uh, the millennials are looking to become homeowners. So a painful, a painful housing market, a housing market in recession, not much good to say about 2023. So let me start with the inventory side of things. Um, how do you try and get that turned around? Because obviously there are, are the factors of interest rates. There's the factors of cost of materials. There's the labor side. I mean, there are a lot of components in here that seemingly would have, a, have an impact. And realistically, this is a story we've been talking about for many years. This isn't just because of, of what we've been dealing with with the, uh, with the impact from interest rates. Well, there are two sides to the inventory issue and the supply issue is what you're going to. And one is the existing inventory, which is totally – governed by the lock-in problem. So this is a problem that will solve itself. That's the good news going forward. The supply side in terms of new building, yes, of course, we're going to continue to see high costs there. We're going to continue to see labor costs are a challenge and availability is a, is a challenge. But, you know, construction is happening. In fact, we're seeing more construction as a percentage of housing sales than we've seen in decades. So the construction industry has actually been part of the solution. The essence of the problem is the lock-in effect, the low amount of inventory which is due to people simply saying, We're not, I'm not going to give up a 3% rate to get to a 7% rate. Am I crazy? I'm not going to do that. And that is only going to be solved by one thing, which is interest rates declining. How then do you solve the, because even if you see uh, interest rates come from 7 to 5%, somebody that's got a 3 3 and a quarter percent interest rate, it's still n not as enticing for them. I mean, maybe they feel like I can make put a up with that extra point and a half, point and three quarters to be able to go get that, that next house. It will make a difference because we do have people who are there at 4% and 4.5%. So if we hit 5%, that will be a remarkable turnaround. And what's interesting is you see the two things go together. Not only does the interest and mortgage rate go down, and that, of course, has caused the cost of mortgage to go up by a third, and but also the price of housing will go down. So the two points of pain will transfer translate to points of gain. So I see while 2023 has been extremely painful and 2024 will be a continuation, by the end of 2024, I see considerable relief ahead, mostly because inflation is considerably under control. This is a story that hasn't been well covered, but actually over the last six months, we've solved inflation. Inflation's gone, is for annually, if you look at it, it's 4%, but over the last six months, annualized, it's 2.5%. And that's before we have this current slowdown, eventual slow, no recession, landing, whatever it is, it's coming down. So we have solved the inflation problem. It's yet, we have three to four months, whatever, to see it, and six months for it to hit the mortgage market. But once it does affect long-term interest rates, it will also affect this huge gap between mortgage rates and 10 years, which is very unusual. That is going to, that gap is also going to deflate. So we'll have a very good potential decline in mortgage rates for the sake of the housing market, which will go a long way to solving the problem because at the same time that the cost of a mortgage goes down, 
housing prices are likely to ease simply because we will have more housing on the market. We will have people who have today 5.5%, 5% mortgages, 4.5% mortgages. As mortgages start going down to the 5%, then, you know, buying down, which is happening right now, buying down from 5% to 4.5% is a lot easier than buying down from 7% to 5%, which is what we're seeing. And that, of course, is rare and difficult to achieve. Not so difficult to get to a 4.5% rate when the markets are saying 5%. And I see that. That's the good news for 2024. So it's interesting then with that buy down, I guess you're seeing it a little bit now. Yes. As we're, you know, in the month of December, as we're taping this, um, from, you know, seven to 5% yes. by a lot of, yes. by, by a lot of builders. Yes. Because they have some of these yes. properties out there and they want to move them. Yes. Yes. So buy downs are happening because they have to happen, but there's only a limited capacity to get right. that done. But of course, if markets on your side, if the interest rate, 10-year interest rate starts moving. It has. It's moved already. Yeah. But this is, uh, we're going to see, I think, a dramatic decline in 10-year rates over the next 12 months. Do builders need to look at the types of properties that they're putting out in the market? And I ask that because a, a lot of the new properties out there seemingly are the very much, uh, you, you, there's a lot of uh, IoT that's involved in the property, big houses, couple in car short, garage. In short, you're right. And look at that middle market or lower yes. market individual single family home to build those properties out as well. And they are. There's a shrinkage on house size. There is smaller lots. This is happening. Builders are responding to the increased need for that starter home. We're joined here by Susan Walker, professor of real estate here at the Wharton School. Uh, so you're optimistic then as we look at next year in terms of what we may be able to see with, with maybe the caveat of, of interest rates coming down. Yeah, well, that's a caveat. And I I'm, I keep on saying 2024, but the, really the sad part of it, it's really stay alive to 25. It's the end of 24 relief we're, we're going to see at the end. It will take time for these issues to resolve and for inflation to become obviously solved. It's uh, I see that, but for it actually to be in the market and the Fed isn't going to – uh, announce that it's over until it's over. What do you think this all means then for the amazing run-up we've seen the last few years in multifamily properties, which, I mean, it, it seemed like there for a while every new property that was going up it's was amazing. a big apartment building. It's amazing. It actually is. And it, it, it's, a, it's a, a great cure for the potential oversupply of multifamily, which we're seeing in the market right now. We're seeing price points come down. We're seeing rents come down. That's actually another good thing for inflation because a very large 40% of the CPI is rent equivalent. So this is another optimistic. Again, rents are not likely to fall a lot in 2020. Uh, 2024. But as as 2024 continues, this oversupply problem is going to put downward pressure on rents as well as housing prices. So it's quite unlikely that we're going to see uh, housing prices continue on this un unbelievable, unaffordable upward trend. They're likely to be down very, not much, again, because supply restriction. But once we've got relief on supply, we can see um, we'll see more activity. At that point, again, because interest rates are down, I don't see uh, you're not you haven't asked me outright about prices, yeah. but uh, I don't see a tremendous relief on prices. But it will be a, re a relief simply when interest rates goes down if prices don't rise significantly. So let me ask you about that because obviously, when the pandemic hit and we saw the rates come down so much, and there was just this rush for people buying homes. I mean, you were literally seeing homes not even have the sign out in the front yes. yard and you had 15, right. 15 right. offers on right. them uh, and prices went, went through the roof. So if they go through the roof, what's the expectation then for the current homeowner as to the value of their home and, and where it might end up here in the next couple of years? How much might it pull back or what the, are the increases that they saw a couple of years ago? Are they fairly safe at this point? They are. They're they're in they're built in at this point because there has been a major transformation a major shift in the role of housing for families and that is people want more space they want more housing they want owner occupancy even though at this price point they're not able to get it yeah. 
by 2025, more will be able to get it. And we will see housing prices, I believe, once again on the rise. And so the DIY movement that we saw during the pandemic, that really worked out to the benefit of all the homeowners taking the time and in many cases doing your doing it yourself. Yes, it worked out economically as well as more space is a good thing when you're so many so much at Thank home. You. Absolutely. Uh, let's touch on commercial for a second, if we can, because there's a lot of questions around where that is headed. Uh, companies are obviously reassessing their 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 footprint. Uh, remote work has obviously played a role in that as well. I, I think that's probably is it safe to say a little bit of a longer term view that you have Absolutely. to have on where commercial real estate is right is a great deal of uncertainty and i do believe the markets could stay frozen throughout this year in fact we could have uh di more distress in the commercial market as we have this wall of debt that needs to be refinanced at still high interest rates far higher than the original rate so banks are pulling back and they're pulling back at a time when the mortgages are coming need to be refinanced this and we're talking about commercial office space obviously yeah. Yeah. Uh, logistics it's a different story data centers these are still they're booming actually and they will as interest rates come down continue to do extremely well but the office market resolving that problem is way ahead of us we don't see sales we don't even know what prices are should be where is the price that's low enough to see activity come back to that market we don't see that yet did the banking crisis we had early in 2023 have an impact on, on that to the downside? Any? Absolutely, and it still is. Absolutely. It's a, there's a pullback, especially on regional banks, small banks in commercial real estate lending. And these are the 50% of the money for commercial lending is coming from these banks. So it's a problem. What do you think then is kind of the takeaway for you, having followed this industry so long, about this moment in time for real estate. And, and I, I, I'll kind of throw that out broadly because obviously this has been such a unique period to see play out in how the pricing component has played in, obviously the, the rates uh, playing the role that they have. How do you view this last it's three or a, four years? It's an extraordinary period. It's an extraordinary period in the divergence, the divergence between owner-occupied and people who own their homes, how actually well they've done, those who are struggling to get into the market harder than ever for millennials and Generation Z, and then looking at uh, multifamily, production is extraordinary. So, okay, but rents are going up significantly. Now they are easing. But then turn in the commercial, again, huge dichotomies within the sectors of commercial. So there is no such thing as real estate. There is Owner-occupied, fantastic if you're an owner-occupant. There is, if you're renting, well, you're paying more. If you are a multifamily provider, you're benefiting from that, even though it's easing now. If you're in the office market, you're hurting. If you are a commercial office REIT, you're hurting. Your price of that REIT is in distressed territory. And that's a potential pain point and uh, we don't know how that's going to play out for the economy as a whole and for banks as a whole. I don't see a feedback loop to the extent we saw, for example, in 2009, because I don't. It, we could, of course, if we had a recession like 2009. Sure. But the good news is it looks like the consumer is resilient and that if we have a recession, it's mild and that interest rates will come down as a result. So I'll finish on this because you mentioned about the, the, the component of CPI uh, that that uh, uh, rental and, and shelter plays on, on a monthly basis. How much then has the Fed really had to watch what has played out in the real estate market over the last couple of years when making this consideration about raising their rates on the way up, but now also potentially lowering them on the way down? Yeah, I think the Fed has become real estate economists. Our macro economists are <laughs> real focused on real estate. Susan, great to have you with us. Thanks Pleasure. very much. All the best. Susan Walker, professor of real estate here at the Wharton School.